Are you experiencing knee pain but unsure what is causing it? That's right. So today we're going to cover 10 different diagnoses. They're all common knee pains, and you'll be able to actually get a better feel for what it is and then find out how to treat it. Now, the first three issues we're going to talk about relate to the kneecap specifically, but they are all different diagnoses. So the first one is called patella femoral pain syndrome. And what we're referring to is how your kneecap tracks over your knee joint itself. Brad has this taped up, but he's going to show it on Sam here. So here we have the patella and then the femur underneath. And actually, these are called the condyles. How the patella tracks over the the condyles here, and that's where there's cartilage. If it doesn't track properly, it either pulls to one side or to the other, it causes pain. And where the red tape is here is typically you can either have pain on the inside or medial or the outside of the kneecap, that's lateral, and there's specific exercises or stretches you can do to help work with that. Now this is very common, it's also called runner's knee sometime in common terms. So typically what happens if it's tracking medial, like Brad was saying with the tape, it pushes medially when you're running, when you're squatting, doing movements consistently, rubbing on one side more than the other, or some people it can track laterally. So typically you're gonna have pain syndromes around the tape region Brad was talking about. That's right, we're not gonna get in the treatment for this with all of these, you can, Google or search YouTube, Bob and Brad, patellofemoral syndrome, and there'll be a complete video on options on how to treat this and fix it yourself. Now, the second problem people may be having is located slightly above the kneecap. Normally, you don't have patella syndrome tracking the wrong way. You may, but typically it's tracking right, can't figure it out. This is called quadricep tendinitis. So, Brad, do you want to explain what that is? Yep, so here we have the patella, but now we have the tendon, and the tendon is a broad tendon. It connects to the top of the patella and actually connects to all of the quadriceps. So there's a large muscle mass. That's why it's so large, it's strong. But where it connects to the bone of the tendon right here is typically where you feel the pain. You can see where the red mark is here above the patella. Right in this area is where you feel that pain with going up and down stairs, using it. Oftentimes with repetitive motion uh, can get this started and that once it gets flared up, well, then it can hurt anytime with yeah. motion. It's essentially an inflammation and irritation of this area. So most of the time for this, you just have to get it to kind of calm down. If you have a tear, it'll be much more serious and you'll have to go to the doctor to get that fixed. Right. Yeah, Bob dealt with this that one time and he's having a hard time figuring it out, but he finally did and we have a video on that as well and more than one for different options. Ah, Bob is saying, yeah, he remembers that. So uh, there we go. That's that area. Let's go to, the, what are we on, three or four? Three. Three. The next issue is called patellar tendinitis. Now this is the bottom portion below the kneecap here and oftentimes it can get irritated and inflamed as well. It connects to your tibial tuberosity here, which the patella tendon has there and Brad is showing. The bottom very portion there, it usually gets irritated. It's very common for repetitive sports people, so runners or jumping sports like volleyball or basketball. That's right, so here actually the dark area if you can see that uh, in the camera is the tendon that connects again to the patella to the bone right here, your tibia tuberosity. And there it is, the mar red mark area on my leg. Uh, this is a nice one. I like treating it with patients because usually you can treat it well. It's easy to access. It's superficial. Now there's right under the skin. So you can use cold on it and a number of other treatments to get it to settle down and get you back to where you want to be. Now, the fourth condition is called osgood schlatter disease. Now, it is a similar pain area to what we just talked about, except for this is common between adolescents between the age of 9 and 16, and it's mm -hmm. usually caused by growing too fast too quickly. And the location is right on the bone where the uh, tibial tendon that we just talked about is, and we lift that up, it's right here. Now I've got a really nice uh, example of it here under the red tape, right in this location. You will get a significant bump there just like this. It's painful, you don't wanna kneel on it. It's not fun to have. Typically people get over it with time and there is some treatment to help that out. Just go ahead, Osgood Schlatter. I don't 
That's good stuff. Where did that name come from? Sounds very German I th- to me. I think Bob knows. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, anyways, there it is. And uh, you shouldn't joke about it. If you have it, you're going to be upset with us. Sorry about that. Again, things like running and jumping can exacerbate it. So maybe during the time it's painful, take rest from those activities. But once you get over it, you're typically done with it. Problem number five is typically located on the inside of the knee region here, and it's called pes anserine bursitis. Now, bursitis means there is a bursa there. A bursa is essentially a little fluid-filled sac that is numerous ones all over your body, but they go between tendons to make sure things aren't rubbing and causing friction on each other. And in the area, it can be inflamed or irritated because you have three muscle tendons that all combine in the here, which right. we call the pes anserine. And if you have this, you're gonna feel pain there. You can see where the red tape is. This is where it will be. You're gonna actually feel it. You've rub and put some pressure on it. It's gonna hurt because those bursas are, have a lot of nerve endings and they're very sensitive sensitive when they get inflamed. So you want to be careful with it. This is something you can ice and there's some work you can do with the muscles up here. Once again, explained on the videos that you will find uh, under Bob and Brad. Now the next two problems are both related to ligaments. Now we have numerous ligaments in the knee, but we're gonna talk about the ones on the inside and outside. So inside we have MCL or medial collateral ligament and outside we have LCL or lateral collateral ligament. Typically these get injured with a sports injury or some type of dramatic force either going in or out applied to the knee. They can happen as we age if you happen to have some type of wear and tear and just manage to strain it. Oh. But typically a ligament issue is pretty painful and you normally hear a pop if you actually tore it. That's right. So Sam here actually has a very nice model of the actual, here's the MCL. The ligament is a narrow band. It's flat and it's very strong, connects here and it keeps your knee joint from going like this, opening up like a barn door as I've, <laughs> my professor in college always talked about. And then over here, the same thing. Here is the LCL or the outside ligament, which stabilizes a knee in this direction. Now on me, you can see I'm here. We've got the piece of tape here and the piece of tape here. If they get strained and they're not tore, but they're inflamed, you can feel or palpate over that and have tender spots where it's inflamed and tender. Uh, if it's unstable, you're going to feel like your knee may be unstable when you walk and it's just uh, eerie feeling, you don't like it, and if it's actually tore wide apart, you really need to get to a doctor because you do not want to let that knee get open and damage one of the other ligaments. Now, the difference, if you're curious, between a ligament and a tendon is a ligament purely connects a bone to a bone. A tendon connects a muscle to a bone. So we obviously don't have as quad muscles here, but that's why this is called a tendon and these are ligaments. Ah, good point, Mike. We learn something new every day on this channel. Okay, for number eight and nine, we're gonna combine them again. And this has to do with your joint line and your meniscus. Now to find your actual joint line, you will find kind of some bony prominences around it and your kneecap kind of in the center. Brad has it outlined nicely on his knee, but you'll feel a little groove in between all that. Mm -hmm. That is where your joint line actually is. To test if you're having some pain in this area, most of the time once you bend your knee more to 90 degrees and start pushing or palpating, that's when you will feel the pain come about. That's right. Now, meniscus has been always a challenge to me to describe it to patients, although I did not have Sam here. So if we open up the knee and we look at it, you can see the green line. That's actually the meniscus. It's a cartilage uh, tissue and it stabilizes the knee. You can see it forms cups and the condyles of the humor or the femur fits in there and you have a nice stable joint as a result. Thanks Tanner, looking at the wrong camera. So there we go, that's the meniscus. They're shaped like horseshoes and they have medial and lateral, all kinds of medical names we do not need to know about. But Mike did a nice job, I put green lines. Where, when I had meniscus problems, the surgeon was just go in there and he would push deep in the joint line looking for tenderness. The other key thing with meniscus, if you have a rip or a tear or a fold in a meniscus, which is common, your knee has a tendency to lock up 
oftentimes going up and down stairs. It's painful when it locks. And usually if you wiggle it around a little bit and move it, the fold of the tear will go back into place and then it's okay just like that. That's probably a meniscus problem. You need to see a doctor, a therapist to get good tests done. It's kind of hard to do meniscus tests as a lay person. Now, if you're not experiencing any catching or locking, another issue you may have is just some arthritis developing mm. in your knee joint itself. So that's a little different, but again, that would be pretty painful in your joint line region. That darned arthritis. Now, the last problem area we're gonna talk about is the back of the knee. There can be numerous issues going on, so we're actually gonna discuss three common issues that may be happening here. The first one is you may actually have a hamstring strain or possibly a tear. You have three hamstring muscles. They run from your ischial tuberosity down to the inside and outside of your knees. You have one that runs outside and you have two that run inside. So if you're experiencing pain on the outside, it might be your biceps femoris hamstring. If on the inside, it's either your semi-membranosus or tendinosus hamstring muscles. There you go. So I have the line representing or right over the tendon of this muscle and the two here. If those tendons are strained or slightly tore, they can be painful. Hopefully you don't rupture one because then you're going to have a gap there and the muscle belly of the muscle will actually ball up in here. If that's a problem, you really need to see the doctor and get that yeah. taken care of. So there you go. We also have the popliteus muscle, which is a small little muscle that is just in this area. And it's really important for the mechanics of your knee, particularly when you're walking, and at actually does a slight rotation so the mechanics work well with your knee and your knee lasts for a long time. It's painful, it can tighten up and simply a massage, oh, we don't wanna get into the treatment yet, but we'll talk about it. You can massage that area and sometimes that's enough to loosen that muscle up get it back to normal. Mike, go ahead, I'm taking the, I'm taking the show again. Yeah, the popliteus actually runs diagonally across yeah. both bones, so that's why it's good to work, focus on not straightening your knee as much when you have problems there. Now, the last issue people have is pretty obvious. It's called a Baker's cyst or a popliteal cyst is the more medical term for it. So you'll have a growth or a cyst behind your knee. That's why it's pretty obvious if you have it. You actually have synovial fluid all within your knee joint. That's completely normal. It gets produced more with movement. With a Baker's cyst, what can happen, it can kind of start producing and pooling in one specific area. That's what caused the cyst to form. And you really need to go see a doctor. But wait, issues. Mike, we have to show something. Cut. So here's a simple model of, you know, common location for a cyst. It is fluid filled and it's, uh, it can be a problem. You don't want to just leave it there. Have it looked, looked at by a doctor and have it uh, treated as appropriate. Now, this is commonly caused by osteoarthritis or mm. rheumatoid arthritis, possibly a meniscal tear as well, but usually they take a while to develop and you can notice it coming. Today's product is a D5 Pro Massage Gun by Bob and Brad. We're just launched this and it's an excellent product. We're gonna go through all the details in just one second. It is a very powerful massager with a 55 pound stall force. That's right. It also has the latest in battery technology, so they last longer and they charge up faster. Yes, they are rechargeable. Simply plug in on the bottom here, plug it into the wall. It comes with the cord in there and just let it charge up. And the ergonomic handle and the way it is shaped, you can get to your back, over the shoulder and those traps easier. Also back on the hamstrings, those awkward places. It also comes with five massage heads. Simply pull them off to change them out. That's right. It does come with the air, massage, or the air head, which is really important when you have a gun this powerful so that you don't overdo it as well as the other ones that you, when you really want to get in deep. I like this one as well. It's rounded, it's uh, kind of an in-between head. And it also has four different massage modes. Basically, it just changes the speed at which the massage head is moving when you vary on those. And it can go from 1500 RPM to 2500 RPM. And look at the nice case it comes with. It also has a very nice user manual. It even has a carrying case for the massage heads. Fancy. Go. And here's yeah, the yeah. charging cord yeah. part. And this is uh, comes with all Bob and Brad massage guns. We do not want to skimp. Nice zip it up. There you go. And 
carried away. Now, they do come with a one-year warranty through Amazon when you buy it, but if you go to our website, you can actually do a two-year warranty for free. That's bobandbrad.com. Go to that and just go to the product section and go to where it asks for the two-year warranty. Fill it in. It's done. Voila. So obviously, this is a very comprehensive video about all the problems that you could have with your knees. Go ahead, look at them. Hopefully, we've helped you out, but we've got another video that can even give you more. Yes, help. if you're having knee pain while walking or even stairs, you can click the video link on the screen. That video goes much more in depth on exercises and proper walking mechanics. There you go. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.